Hey, for my next project I've chosen an ESP32 D1 mini board from ASAP Delivery as controller. I like this board very much, it's more compact, let's say about 30% smaller than the ESP dev kit that I previously used. But as it turned out, this board has an issue. It doesn't boot reliably when powered by an external 5 volt via VCC pin. Let me show this by uploading a simple blink sketch. Okay, it's blinking. Now let's first solder the pin headers quickly. Come on, I said quickly. That's better. Now we can connect the external power supply easily. It doesn't start blinking every time the power is connected. However, when it is powered via the USB connection, it's booting correctly. The reason for this misbehavior lies in the auto program feature of this board. As you might know, the IO pin 0 needs to be pulled low for uploading a new program into the flash memory of the ESP. The D1 Mini has this circuitry, which consists of two integrated transistors connected to the IO 0 pin and enable pin controlled by RTS and DTR signals from the USB to serial converter chip. So, this schematic which I found on the internet shows the wiring of the USB to serial converter as it should be, with the external 5 volts connected to the VBUS pin on the chip. However, the PCB from the board I have is not connected this way. On this ASET delivery board, the VBUS pin of the converter chip is not connected to the external 5 volts. Instead, it is connected to the USB power of the USB connector. As you can see, there is a diode between USB power and the external 5 volt, which protects your USB port from damage when both an external power and USB is connected. But with this wiring, the VBUS pin is not powered when only the external 5V is connected. In this state, the IO0 pin stays at a level of about 0.6 to 0.9 volts, which might be interpreted as low level and therefore the ESP32 is permanently waiting for a new software and doesn't boot up normally. The solution I found in the net proposed to remove the diode and shorten the two pads, which connects the USB power directly to the X5 volts and therefore also to the VBUS pin of the SIL chip. Of course this would work, but you would lose the protection function of the diode and would risk a damage of your USB port of your PC when connecting both the external power and the USB cable. So I don't like this solution. However, the idea is correct. The VBUS pin must be connected to the X5 volt, but not in such a rude manner. Instead, the state of this schematic must be set up. Let's have a look at the PCB to see what to do. Here is the USB power pin of the USB connector. As you can see, it is connected to the anode of the diode here, which is correct but it's also connected to the VBUS pin 8 of the SIL converter chip here. 
This circuit path lies on the back side of the board. So let's check it with a continuity tester quickly. Okay, this isn't correct because VBUS must be connected to X5 volt, which is here at the cathode of the diode. Therefore, this circuit path must be cut off first. I do this with a very small screwdriver by carefully scraping over the circuit path until I can see the carrier material of the PCB through the copper layer. Next step is to check that the connection between VBUS and USB power is really gone with a circuit indicator. Ok, it doesn't beep anymore. Next, we need to clear a copper area for soldering and then connect a small wire between this new copper bed and the cathode of the diode above, which is the X5 volt connection. It should look like this. Let's check once more if everything is connected properly now. See? The VBUS pin 8 is connected to the diode's cathode, whereas it's not connected to USB power anymore. Now our little blinker starts blinking every time the external power is connected. And the IO0 pin reaches correct high level, as it should be. And I have a properly functioning ESP32 D1 mini board for my upcoming projects. By the way, other related links you can find in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.